Hi everyone, these are your February 2017 horoscopes and that's a month of love and a month of eclipses as well. We'll go in depth about it. But because it's the month of, mo uh, the month of love, I want to bring you a very cheap and affordable webinar just for $19 below $20 that I'll do on the 12th of February right after the eclipse and before February the 14th, the uh, celebration of love. And it's gonna be on compatibility and love according to ancient method, Vedic method. We're going to look at the soulmate chart, the nine divisional on the Vamsha chart and compare it to the birth chart of one person and the other. This is a technique that is very rare. I, don't, I haven't seen anyone else use it, but um, one particular astrologer and it's ancient one. It's given to her in Tibet. So it's amazing, guys. Uh, I personally use it a lot and it shows whether you're soulmates, basically, because you can have sexual attraction and physical attraction with many people. What Are you meant to walk the path to together in this lifetime um, and and uh, is there this attraction and sometimes people can feel the attraction towards someone else but the other one might not feel they might feel sexually attracted to you but might not feel the pull to spend your life with you and we're going to be able to see whether it's both ways or one ways it's amazing technique come and join me just twenty dollars and then towards the end of february on the 20 something I think it was the 26th. Yes, on Sunday again, I'm gonna do a webinar all about Neptune. Those of you who took all about Uranus, my webinar, uh, you get a discount for it. And um, so come and join me for this one. It, it's been success, six, seven hours, it carries on. Sagittarius, February 2017. Hi Sag, it's basically eclipse season and I'm here to kind of give you some peace of mind because uh, these eclipses are very interesting. They're kind of different and of course every eclipse can turn things upside down in us and make us worry because it's, it, this is when we're shifting gears. But th this particular eclipse, the first one, the lunar eclipse which is happening in Leo, seems to be much more supportive especially to the fire signs like you if you're a Sagittarius Sun Moon or Ascendant and it's happening for you in your ninth house Sagittarius so uh, this eclipse a ninth house is a very lucky house and this eclipse is eclipse which brings you something actually rather than take something away because it's caused by the moon which is eclipse means a full moon on steroids it's it's um, Eclipsed by Rahu, but Rahu is a point of material gain and getting something material. And it's part of a beautiful configuration. Look at that. It's basically part of this eclipse. When it's happening, there'll be a grand trine in fire. Uh, so the moon will align perfectly at 23, 4 degrees with Leo, with, sorry, with Saturn in your sign and with Uranus in uh, another fire sign in Aries and it creates a grand trine in fire this lunar eclipse and you're a fire sign and grand trines are extremely auspicious when they happen in fire for in all the fire signs particularly now we're talking about Sagittarius because grand, fire, grand trine allows uh, new opportunities to come, new inspirations to come, new vision for the future and uh, or vision of the future that you've had for some time to come into fruition because it's a full moon something comes to fruition something gives material results so some long-term plans or some some big vision you've had maybe can start manifesting over the next two three months because the eclipse is active in january in february march and into april as well lunar eclipse lasts quite long it's not just going to be on the 10th of february when the lunar eclipse happens uh, usually actually exactly on the week before and after the lunar eclipse and any eclipses things can feel like they're out of hand and they're quite scary but the actual full results of the eclipse can be seen within three months after the eclipse and this one will bring you something even if there was some shake up psychologically emotionally this will bring you something about your higher vision to some of you can give for example a mentor or a teacher who is showing you the path and the way for some of you can your inner mentor and teacher can show you the path to the future for, for, for your goals for the future can show you the Dharma the Dharma is what you're meant to do because ninth house is the house of meaning the purpose of life of Dharma of, of why we wake up in the morning was the reason to wake up in the morning and when we have a bad ninth house even if we have the best job, the best wife, the best career, we can wake up with such a sense of meaninglessness. If you have a good nine house, nine house, 
awake on ninth house you can have neither job nor money nor anything and you can still feel so much belief and hope in life and can be feeling so happy it's one of the houses of happiness and blessings because those blessings comes from your inner state of finding meaning and purpose in life so this lunar eclipse can help you with its beautiful grand trine in fire bring inspirations realizations of um, inspirations and motivations that lead you and already myself maybe some of you are feeling it in January you know some of you might feel it in February some of you might feel it in March you know and some kind of something that directs you on a new path or on a path that some dream or vision you've had that can start manifesting in a certain way that the circumstances align right, right for you to tap into this potential of the grand trine and not only that to tap into the potential but to manifest it in a material way because the moon is part of a grand square, well, not grand square a mystical rectangle with, the, with Jupiter, the Sun and Uranus and the rectangles is about taking an inspirational idea, the trine, taking an opportunity, the trine and making it a reality because the square shape is about physical manifestation, tangible manifestation and so maybe some ideals of yours, maybe some uh, nine house rules uh, opportunity possibly can manifest for travel, for higher education, for pre-qualification of your career, for taking a different direction, something that will inspire you, something that will give you more meaning in your life to t start taking practical and, and real tangible steps in that direction to give you meaning and to lead you on your path of Dharma. Uh, some of you might get a teacher, a mentor, some of you might start studying something higher or start seeing the results of you know taking such steps as well <sighs> okay so that's one of the you know one of the manifestations uh, of one of the solar sorry the lunar eclipse the other eclipse is a solar eclipse which is happening in your fourth house Sagittarius whether it's your ascendance on the moon and a solar eclipse is about this in particular is about letting go of something because it's caused by Ketu, which is the south node of the moon, which is first releasing something, just like Raku is about getting something, Ketu is about releasing something from the past, so something is taken away from you, or you're asked to release it, but to make space for something new to come over the next six months, because the solar eclipse is active up to six months after the solar eclipse, you know, so it's happening on the 26th of February, but it's not just going to be on the 26th this will happen. Uh, it might have started a little bit before and continue up to the summer, basically. So, it's in your fourth house, you might be asked to release a family member. You might be asked to release some family responsibility or duty you've had. You might be asked to release some... Uh, property, place of living, uh, some, and not all Sagittarius, of course, but something has to be let go of first. Uh, and on the positive level, fourth house is our memories from childhood and how we grew up. Maybe if we're holding on to some grudges, some pain in regards to our parents, in regards to how we grew up, some hang ups that are blocking us from fully developing, which are stemming from our childhood, say mentality of, of unworthiness, of poverty, that are due to a parent of yours, that are due to your upbringing, that are due to the uh, environment in which you were being brought up, you know, the cultural environment. All those planets, with the solar eclipse in Pisces. Pisces is about letting go. Ketu is about letting go and releasing. Neptune is about letting go and letting go and releasing. So all this letting go energy of this eclipse can help you release maybe such grudges or something that's holding you back from the past that stems from your childhood. Can help you release some emotional attachments as well because fourth house rules what we feel like we belong to that we're that this is the emotional foundation on which our whole life is built. Our uh, emotional identification of who you are basically the seat of the soul is the fourth house so you might there might be some release of the soul because fourth house is a moksha house house of liberation together with the 12th and the 8th and they're very hidden very emotional very unconscious houses and when we have such a window of, of opening of releasing energies like it's going to happen in February you can release all the attachment emotionally things that that you subconsciously pray 
determine who you are with because because of family conditioning because of earlier conditions you know might be great for therapy work might be great of letting go of past memories and, and releasing certain things very powerfully you know so or releasing something from the past connected to the family connected to who you identify as a soul as a person so that can be the good way of this eclipse so it can make new space for new healthier emotional habits to grow in you, new healthier soul identification, new healthier emotional foundation in your life to grow over the next six months. Uh, but if you're asked to relieve, release more the literal symbolism of the fifth house, of the fourth house, which is property, which is parent, which is responsibilities and family of some sort, um, it can mean that it's making space for something new and better to come over the next six months after that. So that's that's one of the uh, that's what this eclipse can affect you like strongly. Uh, and now let's see what else is happening. Another important thing is that there is lots of support from Mars and Venus. By the way, look how all the planets a big part of the month are in masculine signs and you are a masculine sign Sagittarius. So you have the sun in masculine sign till the 20th, Uranus the whole month is in Aries masculine sign, uh, Jupiter is in a masculine sign the whole month uh, in Aquarius, uh, sorry, in Libra. Uh, and Mars and Venus are for the most part of the month in masculine sign in Aries. And masculine signs support masculine planets, uh, masculine, other masculine signs. So there's lots of support coming to you to take action, to move forward, to move ahead in your life, Sagittarius. With so much masculine energy around. And Sagittarius, by nature, you probably know that you don't like to sit around and wait, that you like to have things exciting, moving, because this is the nature of masculine Sagittarius energy. And so all those planets in masculine signs are helping you move ahead, are helping you proceed forward um, and, and helping you proceed with your plans and goals and actions. So lots of support, lots of fiery support from Mars in Aries in your fifth house, Sagittarius. So you can have lots of fun as well. Great for competitive sports, great for performances, great for entertainment and having fun of any sort, great for going out on dates. Venus is also in your fifth house of romantic and pleasurable activities and hobbies. All the things that we really enjoy doing and we're passionate about is the fifth house, like flirting, partying, going to the theater, entertainment, you know, indulging in our hobbies. And both planets have passion and day in your fifth house for a big part in Aquarius, uh, for a big part of February, sorry. So supporting you in regards to that. So you might have some good dates that you go on. You might have some good fun activities. If you're in any kind of careers that are performers, that are center stage careers, like speaking in front of a camera, speaking in front of audience, which is fifth house. If you're in any kind of creative careers as well, these two planets will really impassion you and really bring out this charisma, magnetism in you to be this in the central stage. And they can, in fifth house rules your children as well. Uh, and you can be more active with your children and have some excitable moments there. They can be a bit more unruly with Mars there as well, but Venus is also there to smooth things out. Um, and romantically, as I said, this can be quite sparkly time of passions going high. So good for, for dating as well. Um, I'm not saying this will bring the love of your life. It's just the energies of romantic experiences and creativity and you feeling in the flow and feeling inspired will be very much around you in February. Um, and maybe towards the end of February, they'll kind of start coming down when all those planets, the Sun and Mercury from around the 20th or oh, even 23rd, 4th, start going into Pisces, you might start feeling into a fourth house, which is much more connected to your inner world, to being introverted. You, you probably towards the end of the month, you start feeling a little bit more into yourself, a little bit more reminiscent of the past and, you know, all those eclipse in the fourth house that we talked about of those emotional issues that you can work through and release, uh, which is more introverted in activity. But till then there is like lots of action happening, lots of support and uh, Jupiter is going retrograde in your 11th house. Uh, it's going to be retrograde till, till June for about four or five months, guys. And what does it mean? Maybe 
uh, there will be when a planet moves retrograde for the next four or five months, you have a chance to reevaluate certain long term goals and dreams of yours. 11th house rules our long term wishes, our long term goals, something that we've been working hard on for, for you know, to achieve like a PhD, like a you know, some goal that you have there long term that you want to achieve and um, titles and honors and gains as well, gains and rewards. So Jupiter going retrograde there means that these things might not manifest immediately till June, but some things that can, but opportunities which can help you get closer to those goals or to receive recognition or to receive more gains financially or as uh, appreciation from society. Uh, will come back to you. Something that possibly you weren't aware of before, maybe just came up as an opportunity earlier or just like an idea and it didn't materialize. Now when Jupiter comes retrograde, it can come back to you so you work hard on it and actually implant it, make it your own because it's retrograde, it's going within making it your own and, and collecting the energies of Jupiter. Actually it's quite good because people can often create very beneficial contacts and develop them, like develop a friendship while Jupiter is retrograde of someone that maybe was just an associate or an acquaintance. You can develop a deeper connection with them and build upon those relationships and when Jupiter starts moving direct from the summer onwards, the bridges that you've built and work hard on during the retrograde period, because retrograde period requires us to put more efforts to work harder, but it gives three times better results when the planet starts moving direct. Uh, so by the end of Jupiter in your 11th house by October, you'll be able to see the results of you having created some better network of support, uh, better social connections, uh, have moved forward towards a goal, a long-term goal or a dream of yours, created more gainfulness in your life and rewards. A great house, the 11th house to have Jupiter transiting there. Uh, but while it's retrograde, you might not immediately see the results. You might have to go back, implant it, work on it harder, uh, improve on it or build upon it. And then when it starts moving direct, you start seeing the results of those 11 house activities that I mentioned, which can be very profitable back actually, because 11 house is the most profitable gain house, financially speaking. Uh, and these are gains that come to you through your social network and gains that come to you by your personal efforts and as a reward of your personal efforts. Anyway, and then we have Saturn. We'll be moving direct from 24 to 27 degrees in Sagittarius. If you happen to have your moon from around 23 to around 27 degrees, even I would say 23. 23 to 27 degrees in Sagittarius. Check out my planetary detail table to see if you have Sun, Moon or Ascendant in Sagittarius in those degrees. Or basically if you're born from around the 15th to the 19th of December, it means your Sun is in those degrees from 24 to 27 Sagittarius and you're born around the 15th to the 19th of December, but you can have the Ascendant or the Moon there. It doesn't have to be the Sun, but for the Ascendant and Moon, we look at the degrees. Then Saturn is transiting those degrees for the first time in 29 years, guys. And you're feeling it. You're, you're the only ones that are feeling this Saturn slow down. But Saturn is bringing you new responsibilities and new duties, which are Saturn over the next one year, and it will repeat two more times, starting from February for those born on those dates. You can bring some harder tests to test your perseverance, to test your commitment to, to whatever it is. If it's the moon, it might be relationship, marriage, family, uh, the sun, career, path in life, the ascendant, to, to see how committed you are to new beginning or to something. To basically how Saturn is a great tester. It first gives you the tests and then it gives you the lesson. But it wants to test you how committed you are to something. So Saturn only allows something to stay in your life if you work really hard for it. Say if, if Saturn is transiting your ascendant or your moon and you're in a relationship that something starts going wrong there and you don't really have even the, the desire to work on it, Saturn will remove it or say some new tests and challenges come in your career and your social life and you're not really giving a hundred percent, Saturn will can change your career, can remove it from you, you know, uh, can block it somehow, uh, some, some, some developments with male authority figures, demanding figures that can be, but if you're really dedicated 
about something because Saturn tests the education and perseverance. Um, then by the end of this process, one year from now, you'd have created a much more solid foundation, like building the foundations of a building, which takes three times longer to build foundations than the rest of the building, and it stays invisible. You don't see the results of the foundation. It's like you pass by the building and you see nothing, it's foundations, but it takes much longer to build the foundations than the rest of the building. So this is what Saturn does. When it transits an important point in our horoscope, it makes you build foundations there, it makes you work your ass off basically. And the best thing to approach is serious attitude. And by the way, if you're gonna be having Saturn transit, check out my video, how to overcome difficult Saturn transits, which is with me and Diana, an astrologer. She tells you hacks, life hacks on how to deal because it can be emotionally very, heavy and you can people can get depressed and people can feel like there is no end to it saturn is the planet of burden and labor and carrying a burden and labor but just like a pregnancy when you carry it through the end it might feel burdensome but it gives birth to something amazing you know if you so you know anyway it requires serious approach it can slow things down, it requires extra duties and responsibilities that you take and that's why we get very grumpy when Saturn is around and resentful because when we're given twice as much work or responsibilities about something we don't want to take or we have to grow up, what do we do? Everyone is a child still within, what do we do? We throw a tantrum. And that's why Saturn transits can be very painful if we don't want to take new responsibilities because we take we throw tantrums. But if you're naturally more mature, a serious person who is okay to feel restricted and work harder for a while, for maybe a year, then Saturn is a blessing, you know. <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much Sagittarius and I will see you next month. Hope you enjoyed that video. Come and join me for the love webinar uh, on soulmate and come and join me for the Neptune, all about Neptune webinar, because many, many Sagittarians are having Neptune transits for the next 10 years more, you know, till 2025. And Neptune can really change life. Anyway, thank you.